singer Lata Mangeshkar for the first time sang A Mere Button Ke Logo on the 26th of January 1963 at the National Stadium in New Delhi. President S. Radhakrishnan and Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru attended that performance because of Republic Day, the 26th of January, 1963, which was just two months after the end of the 1962 Sino-Indian War. The performance of the song moved Prime Minister Nehru to tears. Those who don't feel inspired by a Mere Button Ke logo don't deserve to be called a Hindustani, said Nehru, who was visibly moved by the song. The song received rave appreciation from across the country and became one of the best patriotic song of India. Today the legendary singer and Bharat Ratna Awardee is no more with us. She breathed her last at 8.12 a.m. after a prolonged illness. The last rites and cremation were held with full state honours at Mumbai's Shivaji Park on the same day. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Governor Bhagat Singh Koshyari, Chief Minister Uddhav Thackeray paid their last respects and floral tributes. The deployment of the 1st Regiment of the S-400 Triumph Missile Systems is likely to complete at an airbase in Punjab by February, military officials said. They said that the Indian Air Force has initiated the deployment process of the missile system and it will take at least six more weeks to complete. According to a report, the 1st Regiment of the S-400 Air Defense System is being deployed in such a way that it can cover parts of the border with China, Northern Sector, as well as Pakistan, Western sector, the transportation of various critical components of the missile systems as well as its peripheral equipment to the site of the deployment is going on, as per the concerned official. The S-400 Triumph is a mobile surface-to-air missile system developed by Russia as Alma Central Design Bureau for Marine Engineering. India will receive five units of the S-400 missile systems from Russia as per the contract signed during 2018 India-Russia summit in New Delhi. The Indian Ministry of Defence has issued a request for information for simulators that can emulate the country's submarine rescue systems, more specifically, the ministry is procuring two sets of simulators that can prepare Indian Navy personnel for the services submarine rescue vessel SRV, and remotely operated vehicle ROV, systems, according to the RFI that was published in January 2022. The SRV simulator should be able to replicate rolling and pitching motions of the actual vehicle and feature the same look, feel, functionalities, man-machine interface, and response time to the Indian Navy's Deep Submergence Rescue Vehicle DSRV. There are two DSRVs in the active service of Indian Navy. These DSRVs can mate with any NATO standard submarines along with all Indian submarines. It is made up of an all-steel single-piece hull. It can dive up to a depth of 650 meters to rescue a crew of sunk submarines. These SRVs are air-transportable hence it can be rapidly deployable to the accident site. With China and Russia coming closer, the US has planned to enhance cooperation, engagement, strategic and economic ties with its Quad partners. Sources told that as part of this strategy, several top officials of the Biden administration will hold intense interactions and meetings with their counterparts from India, Australia and Japan. Indian diplomats posted in Washington said that the U.S. administration has prepared a comprehensive and effective plan to ramp up economic activities and strategic engagement in the Indo-Pacific in view of growing Chinese influence. The U.S. diplomats and officials will be on the job to ensure that the plan to enhance strategic partnership with the Quad countries is implemented properly. All the ambassadors have the agenda of discussing and implementing the U.S. strategy with Quad nations, sources said. This clearly signals that the Quad group is going to give more muscle and power to the Indo-Pacific alliance. The U.S. president seeks to bolster cooperation in the Indo-Pacific to counter China's military and economic power.
Despite having no diplomatic presence or other official, formal means to oversee the fructification and execution of its assistance, Government of India has allotted 200 crore rupees to Taliban ruled Afghanistan in the latest budgetary allocation. The Indian government is yet to recognize the Taliban ruled government, which had forcibly taken over the administration in Afghanistan last year. Official sources in Delhi said that the continuing of financial assistance to one of India's oldest friends was decided while keeping the well-being of the ordinary Afghan citizens in mind who are facing hardships at multiple levels. For decades, India had invested in developing infrastructure in Afghanistan that has eased the life of the locals there.